Hey guys, welcome to Reading for Wednesday. So today, as you can see below, we're learning to notice the aspects of a writer's style. So we're going to have a think about and try to take notice of the things that authors are doing in their writing because um, it's really important that we're able to analyse and discuss what they're doing, why it works, why it's successful. So we're going to have a look at a couple of different authors today and you're also going to have a look at the author of your good fit book. Before we get into it though, um, let's have a look at our quick little APK activity. I want you to consider your preference. So the word preference means what you prefer, what, we, what you'd rather. So we all have preferences, we all have different preferences. So just to get your mind in that space, let's have a look at um, some different things that we can have preferences for. So we might have preferences for colour. So have a think now. Um, I'm not going to get you to write this one down today. You can just think about it in your mind. But what's your preference of colour? If you Obviously, we like lots of different colours, but you might prefer one over the other. You might have a favourite colour. Um, I personally like the colour orange. But... It often doesn't work with much, so I don't don't use it very often. I should use it a bit more. All right, uh, we might have a preference of oops, preference for sports we like. So it might be sports you like, watching sports you like, playing. Like I said before, you can like lots of these, and I'm an example of someone that likes lots of these. But if I had to have a preference for one sport, what would it be? Mm. That's actually a really hard question for me to answer. I'm going to go with cricket because I play it. So I get to still enjoy it and watch it. Um, but it was very hard to pick AFL, basketball, all of them. All right, have a think. What's your preference of sport? And last but not least, another one I'm going to find tricky. Food. What's your preference for food? Um, I've, as you, can, you, know, you can probably see my preferences here from the picture I've chosen. Lots of junk food, stuff I'm trying to avoid at the moment while I'm stuck at home. Um, but if I had preference for one food, hot chips, I could live on hot chips forever. Just hot chips, covered in salt. It's all, it's all I need. Not healthy. Probably not very good for me in the long run. But it's all I need. Um, okay, have a think. What's your preference? Great. Like I said, if you want to write it down, you can. If you want to go back and do that again and write it down and upload it, go for it so you can show your teachers what your preferences are. But we're not that fast. Oh, I'm not that fast. I just want you to think about it for now. All right. Let's move on to our new knowledge. So I'm going to get this up here. Analyzing writing styles. So thinking about preferences, authors have different preferences just like us. We're going to focus on the preferences they have when they write. And that comes across when, we, when we've had a look at a few different types or a few different books of theirs. Um, but we could also just look at one book or one text they've uh, published. And we could pick up things that we think is a preference and a style of their writing. So as readers... Uh, we can analyse what they do. So analysing is some really deep thinking that we want to get to with our reading. We just want to think about what's happening. We want to think about why and how. So what makes the authors unique and successful? What makes it enjoyable? What makes it teach us a lesson? Depends what our focus is. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you an example. I might make this big, actually. I'm going to show you an example of something I've created, and you're going to create something very similar today. So I have here a Venn diagram. If you're unfamiliar with a Venn diagram, number one, I'd be surprised. But number two, it's just two circles that join. And on each side is something unique to the topic. And then in the middle where the circles join is something that both topics have in common. So what I've done is I've compared two really, really great authors and their unique styles. So in the orange, oh, it's an oval, isn't it? In the orange oval, I've got Jackie French just because we've looked at three of her different books in the last 
a uh, week or so, and I've also have experience with lots of her writing. And then on the other side, I have Roald Dahl. I thought I'd choose somebody that most of us would be familiar with and would have seen text from before. I think Roald Dahl is that kind of author. So what I've done, I've had a think, I've had an analyse. What um, what are the what are the styles? What makes their writing unique to them? What are their preferences? So if we have a look at Jackie French, she d- describes using lots of figurative language, which is why we've used so much of her text in the last week or so. She uses real life events to write fictional stories a lot of the time. She also uses really great images to support her writing. Now they're not her images, but the images supporting her writing. Let's flip over to the blue and we can have a look at Raul Dahl. What does he do that's unique? Very detailed descriptions, loves describing people and thin things. And he does it in a bit of a quirky way too. I probably should have added that in a quirky way. Um, he uses lots of humour, obviously. That's his number one. If someone said to you, what's the key thing of Roald Dahl? You go, he writes funny books. Um, and something I notice a lot, he uses made-up words, but he does it in a really great way that we actually understand what the word means, even though it's a made-up word. Um, he's really, really talented in that department. Then in the middle, we've got some things that both authors do. So they both use really descriptive language. They're both extremely entertaining. And another one that I've noticed is they both use, most of the time, the same illustrator for their books. So Roald Dahl uses Quentin Blake for most of the images in his books. Um, And Quentin Blake has really great sketches. And Jackie French uses Bruce Watley for most of her images. So today, you're going to have a go at that, but not Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl was my choice. So what you need to do first is you need to read to self for 10 minutes at least. That's because you are going to compare Jackie French. You are going to compare Jackie, sorry, here it is, Jackie French to (laughs) sorry about that. Done it again. I need to change. There it is to the author of your good fit book that you're reading. So while you're reading your good fit book, you need to be thinking in your mind, what are some unique things that this author is doing? And what are some things that they're doing that's similar to the way Jackie French writes? Now you don't need to read Jackie French because we've read it the last two days and all of last week. So you can think back to that. Um, I want you to aim for five points. So I've done three in each. I want you to aim for five in each. Once you've done that, you can upload your Venn diagram and then continue reading to self for 20 minutes because we need to get at least 30 minutes of reading to yourself, independent, good fit book reading. And then after you've read to self, I want you to go back and do your reflection, which is... In fact, you can do that before you go back to read to self because it's to do with our Venn diagram. What styles of writing do you prefer to read and why? So you might want to caption or comment on your post. So remember, we are comparing Jackie French to the author of your Good Fit book. Enjoy your lesson today.